you've heard the preceding section from the first book of Kings. And at that point, Elijah was sent by the word of the Lord out into the desert to live there with no resources at his disposal, basically entirely dependent upon the Lord. The point is that he was sent out into the desert. It's an act of trust in the providence of God, God's ability and willingness to provide the essentials of life for us, not just of natural life, but of supernatural life. And Elijah goes at his word into the wilderness. And then today we hear that the little stream where Elijah settled, dried up, and now the word of the Lord directs him to go into the town of Sidon which was a, a pagan town just outside the border of Jerusalem, about outside the border of Israel. And he is instructed to go up to this widow and her son and ask them for some food. And the widow says to him, basically, I can't give you anything. I only have a little bit of meal, which I'm going to make into a little cake for my son and I, and then we will eat it, and then that's all we have. We're destitute, we will die. But Elijah insists that he should receive some portion of what they have. And in the end, she does give him some. She trusts him and gives him some, even though she's not a Jew. She demonstrates this great act of kindness. Although she has nothing, she still manages to give something to Elijah. And I think the, the deeper lesson as well is that what happens next is that even though she has nothing, she's still innocent, and although she's not even a Jew, she puts God first. She puts the man of God first, in a sense, demonstrates an act of love for God, and then the jar of meal is not spent. It's like the never-ending Tim Tag packet, you know, it just never ends. And just keeps going and going and going and going. Why? Because she put her trust in God first. How often the, the, the worries of life prevent us from giving what is due to God. We, so many stresses come our way, so many pressures weigh us down. We think, oh, look, this week I just can't get to Mass. I just don't have time. Today I just don't have time to pray. Or I'm just too busy this morning, I'm going to do it later. And later never comes, or when it does, you know, it's too late, we're asleep, we're watching Netflix. The lesson of this widow is that when we put God first, everything else will follow. We may, we may not be rich, we may not be well off in this world's terms, but everything we need, particularly everything our soul needs, will be provided to us. Even under great stress, in the greatest difficulty, we put the Lord first.